We're turning base right now, okay? We're turning base. We're already slower than we should be, okay? Are we already hearing the AOA go off? I'm rolling out on base, and I see, oh, I'm overshooting my runway. Oh, no. Well, I got to, you know, I can't, I can't do anything else. I have to make it, right? That's the mindset we're in. I have to make it. So I'm going to put in some left bank, some left rudder, nice and easy. There's a, there's a buffet already. Left rudder, left bank. And as I pull, that nose just wants to go over again, right there. Hey guys, Sam Terrell, the Northwest Aeronaut. We're here today in the RV 726 Foxtrot Alpha, so I thought it was appropriate to support our Vans uh, merch. Anyway, we are at 9,500 feet over a beautiful layer of uh, scattered broken clouds. And, uh, you know, I've been getting some requests lately to talk about the demonstration stalls for the CFI checkride, but specifically in the RV-12. So I thought I'd take a moment to kind of show you the general stall characteristics of the RV-12 when we're in uh, these types of configurations and when we're kind of doing these types of abnormal stalls. So we're going to be talking about secondary stall, our elevator trim stall, and the dreaded cross-controlled stall. Now, if you're coming from a Cessna or something like that, generally they're going to have a little bit more docile stall characteristics than the RV-12 uh, or RVs in general. The RV kind of likes to drop a wing every once in a while and if you're not used to that it could be a little bit uh, attention getting so we simply need to kind of just be aware of it it's really not a bad idea we've got these or a bad thing <laughs> we've got these great five point harnesses that keep you nice and cozy against the seat but let's start with our secondary stall uh, if you've watched my previous videos on the demo stalls you'll know that i like to demonstrate the secondary stall in a scenario that uh, outlines kind of a departure. And the idea is we're at a high elevation airport. It's a high, high density altitude. You're at full power, climbing at VY, maybe VX, and you're not getting the climb rate you expect. You are trying to get over some obstacles in front of you. Maybe there's a bunch of trees, maybe it's high terrain, but no matter what you do, you can't seem to climb. So you start slowing down, you start hearing those stall indications, maybe you feel a buffet, you try to recover, and as you recover, what do you see out in front of you? Well, you see just more trees and terrain, so instinctively you pull, that nose comes up and you go into that secondary stall. So we're gonna kind of demonstrate that by using a lower power setting than full. So here we are, we're gonna demonstrate uh, simulate a takeoff by slowing down here. And we're only going to keep it about 3,500 RPM or so. So here we are. We're taking off. We rotate. We're at full power. All right, I'm climbing at VX, which is 60. And at 60, you can see, oh my gosh, you know, I'm only climbing at right now two, 300 feet. I'm already at 55. I'm trying to put the nose down to maintain 60, but I got my angle of attack going off already. I've got my stall warning about to come on here. I'm at 53. Trying to outclimb this, look at our rate of climb here is n almost nothing. I'm not climbing, I see trees ahead. There's a stall warning. I feel it's a buffet, I try to put the nose down. I see trees, oh no, I pull again. There's the secondary stall. And that's all it takes, folks. That's uh, how things end badly when we don't do our takeoff performance calculations properly. So. That's your secondary stall. Now let's talk about your uh, your elevator trim stall. And then in this plane, it can happen quite easily. Either because you have a runaway trim, we have a, a beautiful electric trim in the RV-12. But with that electric trim, I mean, you could, if you had a short or something happened, it could run away on you. So let's say you're just flying along here and let's say that, that uh, trim starts running away. This is not the typical scenario we use to demonstrate this. Typically we're demonstrating being trimmed for an approach to landing and we uh, go around and when we go around we don't push the stick forward. But in this case, since we are in the RV-12, let's talk about a runaway trim. So all of a sudden we see our nose starting to pitch up. 
and up and up, and we're like, what's going on? I'm t pushing forward and pushing forward, but what's going on? The trim has run away. There's our star warning. I have to push hard to get that nose down. Oh, man. And then, you know, if you were having to fight this trim the way I am, you might have to pull the, uh, the fuse to cut the trim out, because right now, in this scenario, no matter what I'm doing with the trim buttons, nothing is working. All right, so that would be one instance, but let's go ahead and do it with the normal scenario where we're trimmed for an approach to landing, and we add the power for a go around and the nose shoots up. So we're slowing down a bit to 60. I'll go ahead and put some approach flaps in. There we are. All right, we're coming in. And, oh, there's something on the runway. I have to go around. Full power. Look at that nose start to shoot up. And if I don't push forward here, this plane is going to stall. I get my AOA coming on. I get that stall warning. I have to push that nose down. There's the buffet. Nose down. Get those flaps up. And then reset the trim. Okay, so that just goes to show you when we do go arounds, we never ever pull on the stick. We must push forward and keep level flight while we gain airspeed. Once we get enough airspeed, as we reduce drag and pull flaps out, then we can continue to climb out at the proper airspeed. All right, lastly, we're gonna do the cross-controlled stall. And this is the one that kind of gets people. Now let me show you in two different ways. First, I'm just gonna put us into a forward slip. And with this forward slip, I'm gonna stall the plane. And I want you to see what happens when I do this in a forward slip. This is a slipping cross-controlled stall as opposed to a skidding stall. So here we are, we're going into a forward slip and I'm just raising that nose up. Number three, six, picture, resume on navigation. Okay, I'm using left rudder, right aileron, getting a lot of buffeting already. Okay, I feel that buffeting. I got the AOA going off, stall indication. And let's see, there's the brake. Okay, the nose wants to go down to the left. And if you let it, everything will be fine. Nothing will be wrong. You just have to let the nose down, okay? Now, let me show you it in the cross-controlled configuration. We're simulating, we're in the pattern. We're getting a little bit slow where it might be overwhelmed because there's a lot of planes in the pattern. We're at a new airport that we're not sure, you know, we're not comfortable with, but we're in the pattern, we're getting slow. We turn base, and when we turn base, we have a crosswind on this particular day. It starts pushing us past our runway. So what do we do? We need to, we don't want to miss our final turn. So we put in left rudder with that left bank. And we're, uh, in addition to pulling that stick to try to pull the turn through, we hit that stall and that nose drops. This is how stall spin accidents occur in base to final. So here we are, I'm just gonna put in, uh, I'm actually not gonna do any flaps with this simply because I don't wanna exceed the flap speed range. But here we are, we're turning base right now, okay? We're turning base, we're already slower than we should be, okay? Are we already hearing the AOA go off? I'm rolling out on base and I see, oh, I'm overshooting my runway, oh no. Well, I gotta, you know, I can't, I can't, do anything else I have to make it right that's the mindset we're in I have to make it so I'm gonna put in some left bank some left rudder nice and easy there's a there's a buffet already left rudder left bank and as I pull that nose just wants to go over again right there okay now you can see I did I didn't gain that much uh, airspeed and as long as you recover kind of immediately at the either first indication or at the break uh, you could be able to do this very easily without uh, dropping a wing too aggressively, and certainly without going into a spin, which we don't want to do because the RV-12 is not approved for spins. But my advice in this maneuver in this airplane is to make sure that you are uh, making these inputs gently, okay? We never need to do anything aggressively in the RV-12 because it is such a responsive airplane. And uh, so we want to make sure we're being smooth with our inputs, uh, making sure that we're not coming into it too quickly, and then just be very aware of all the signs of the impending stall. And ultimately, once you get to that full break, you could just uh, let that nose down and fly right out of it. So guys, I hope this has been helpful. Those are your demo stalls in the RV-12. Just be ready for a little bit more of a wing drop with those cross-controlled stalls than perhaps you might be used to. 
um, but certainly nothing like you should have experienced when you did your spin training, so it should all be a-okay. Thanks for spending time with me today, guys, and until next time, resume your own navigation. See ya.